Hello and welcome to episode 116 of Onion Unlimited podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Torridon, and I'm joined by Mariella in the corner. Hello. In the corner over there. Again. Yeah, again. So I'll start off with a joke. All right. Okay. I heard a really good time travel joke yesterday. Uh, oh, I messed that up, didn't I? I heard a really good time travel joke tomorrow. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, I'll try this one instead. I've got a device to fetch futuristic herbs. Futuristic herbs. Mm, it's a time machine. Ah, oh, good one. Very good. Cheeky. Mm -hmm. Good night. Spelt T H T H Y. Fine machine. Fine machine. Yeah, there you go. Right, so we're going to be talking about some really deep stuff today: dreams, DMT, and interdimensional travel. But we're going to start off with something a bit more mundane. Um, Twitter. What the hell's happening on Twitter at the moment? So, as you probably know, he's gone and changed. Uh, Elon Musk owns Twitter now, doesn't he? Yes. And he bought it for several tens of billions of dollars. Um, but then partway through the sale, he decided he didn't want it after all. Uh, but he wasn't allowed to pull out of it. So they forced him to buy it against his wishes mm -hmm. in the end. That's how I understand it. And um, it just, I don't know, it just seems at the moment like Twitter, all these changes that he's making to Twitter, it's like he's destroying it. Well, he's, yeah, pulling it apart and then sort of replacing it with something else. I don't even know if but he's... But even if he's doing even, that, that's just... I don't even know if he's doing that at the moment. I mean, he's like, he's just basically taken Twitter as it was and whacked an, uh, an X icon at the top, which I think looks really crap, if I'm honest. I think what he should have done, if he was going to create an X app, which his idea for an X app is that it's the everything app. So it mm -hmm. does, um, it does social, it does video, audio, all that kind of thing. Uh, but he wants an app that also allows you to pay for things and shop for things and basically a financial app that yep. allows you to conduct all your sort of day to day financial. I don't know how comfortable I'd be with that, but I don't know either. Given given how crazily he's managed the app itself and the process, yeah. Well, like for example, the ads. Apparently, the the people that are on board with advertising at the moment, you know, you get like a, a payout every so often. Yep. He was supposed to be making a payout on the twenty ninth of July, and uh, he's put out a an email to all the advertisers saying that. Uh, they're not able to pay on time. It's not a good look, is it, for a for a billionaire, or for an for an or everything app that is yeah, going to exactly. eventually be a financial app? Yeah. I think that's really, I think that's really poor. But I, was, I, I, I don't know. I just keep looking at this. Like I'm looking at Twitter. Yeah, like I'm looking at it now, and it basically still looks like Twitter. It's still got all the blue, like it's got a blue post button which used to say tweet. tweet. Then it still says tweet. If you look up hmm. somebody's profile or even your own profile. Yeah, it still says, it tweet says tweets or tweets or whatever. And I'm just like. Um, I mean, it's uh, slowly he's, he's kind of removing Twitter from things. Like it, I subscribe to the Twitter blue, so I've got like a blue check mark. Mm -hmm. And that used to be called Twitter blue, but now it's just called blue, which is weird. Why is it not called X blue? I don't know. It's just there doesn't seem to be any sort of continuity across the That's it, yeah. Across yeah. the app. It literally looks like he's just taken the X icon and slapped it at the top. Um, says, there you go, I fixed it. It's really bad. And I put a poll up earlier on my t uh, Twitter. Should are we still going to call it Twitter? Yeah. Uh I've not had many reply yet. I've only had sort of about ten votes. But uh, they've all said yes. They're going to continue calling it Twitter. <laughs> oh, good! I'm not the only one. <laughs> so it's like, what's the point? Well, I wondered if we should call it X Itter. How would you pronounce that? X Itter. X Zitter sounds oh, like an acne cream. Yeah. Zitter. Yes, sounds like something you'd yeah squeeze out. 
Yeah, someone's actually put that, that on there. Yeah, saw that. It's very clever. <laughs> Exeter. And someone has said, funnily enough. Someone, yep. Yeah, you. <laughs> the letter X is pronounced S-H in Maltese. So. Shitter. <laughs> well, it is. It is shitter than it was. <laughs> And then I suppose we're going to be we're going to be doing like sheets, yeah. <laughs> Instead of it's just it's crap. It's it, honestly it's had no thought gone into what I would have done because I'm a web developer. What I would have done if I was Elon Musk, I would have copied all the code onto a development server, yeah. Made all my changes on that, and like really really change it so like the branding is that you know the the X brand really make that X stand out. You yep. know, like on the black yep. or something like that. I'd have done. I mean, at the moment, you've got like a mishmash of things that are square, like the X logo is, is yeah, very instead square. Of round, yeah. Instead of curved like the Twitter bird mm. used to be. But then you've still got like these like really curvy buttons and curvy corners to the, to the boxes and either squared everything off. Go with the, if you're going to go with a, a, a square logo like X, square everything off, square the buttons off, make them black. Exactly. Or you said like a dark charcoal gray. Yeah. So that it's not just black on black on black, you know? Yeah, that's what I would have done. I'd have taken it offline. I'd have totally redesigned it so it looks different. I'd have I'd, I'd have changed that side bar on the web where it's got like home, explore, notifications. Mm. I'd have changed that to the key areas that X is going to be. So like X uh, social, X pay, X shop, etc. cetera, yeah. whatever. And then you go into the site and then you just click on which section you want. You want. That's what I'd have done. And then what I'd have done, I'd have – Sold Twitter, got me money back, and then launched X directly afterwards as a competitor to Twitter. I don't know. Yeah. Or just keep, or keep them the both. Two. Or keep the two. Keep yeah. them both. It's, it's like we've got this sort of zombie Twitter X Frankenstein kind of botched together. Mm. It just It just feels rubbish, you know? Apparently 50, I think at one point there was 28% of people on the app store had given it a one-star rating from when Elon took over. The one-star ratings went up to 28%. Wow. And since he's put the X on, it's gone up to 50% one-star ratings for the app. Oh, no. It's not good, is it? But then I suppose he's a billionaire. Doesn't really matter, does it? Take calculated risks. So I I'm, I'm thinking, um, I've been looking at threads, which is the Instagram mm-hmm. version. And I read on nine to five Mac, uh, dot com this week. They're saying that over the next two weeks or so, they're going to, um, they're going to add a web version, which will be useful and advanced search. And I think if they start, I mean, they already offer 500 characters per post rather than 280 that Twitter's okay. given you. Um, if they were to offer like a full form posting option, because I like the full form, I like to be able to blog on Twitter. Yeah. That's why I've got my blue badge. Yes. If they were to offer that and they were to offer the option to edit, I think I'd, I think I'd move over to threads. Well, I've not signed up yet, so I'm just like I've got enough social media. I probably wouldn't do both. I mean, I, I would still, I'd, I would still post to Twitter, but I think I'd make, I'd make Threads my main, Your main. place yep. for putting yep. stuff on. So if if you're on Threads and you already follow me on Twitter or Shitter, whatever it's called, <laughs> um, go and follow me on. Uh, if you, yeah, here's a promise: if you follow me on Threads, I'll follow you back. How's that for a promise? Okay. Same handles. Same handles. I have many layers and at Onion Unlimited, both of those. Uh, I'll follow you back and I'll carry on following you as long as you behave yourself. How's that? <laughs> Sounds fair. Sounds fair enough. Yeah. So that's, uh, so I'll put a poll up online asking what, what do we think is actually going to happen to Twitter? And I gave my followers three three options. Um, it's going to become the everything app of Elon Musk's dreams. It's going to revert back to Twitter or it's just going to implode. What, what do you think the top answer is so far? Revert back to Twitter. Yeah, I think so. 
I think eventually that little blue bird is going to come back. Yeah, I miss the bird. I like the bird. It was good. It's very cute. Well, it's it, twi- Twitter and tweets and tweeting. It's become part of our vocabulary, hasn't it? It has. You know? Um, but there you go. Elon Musk, if you're listening, stop messing up Twitter. Or hire Dan to fix or it Or hire me you. to come and fix it for you. That's the other thing as well. He's, he's like, um, what was it this week he was saying, is it San Francisco they're based in or? No idea. I'm not sure where it is. Wherever it's based, he was saying about all the people that have been recently leaving the San Francisco area. And he's like saying that people should stay in, 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 in the area, you know, for jobs and all this sort of thing to mm-hmm. keep the economy going. But he's just gone fired like half of his workforce. Exactly. He? It's <laughs> like you can't have your cake it's and eat it ridiculous. too, mate. Like, have you heard about the big X as well? He had a massive X put up on the top of the Twitter building well the first thing was he tried to take the twitter sign down outside the building and they uh, they started removing it but then the people that were taking it off with the scaffolding they'd not got the correct permits to actually have the scaffolding on the sidewalk so oh. they got halfway through it and then the police came along and said you can't do that so then they ended up with a sign that said itter that was that was the first and crappy it could thing be that happened. anything and then he went and put a uh, a massive great big X on the on the roof of the building that lights up. And they were getting loads of complaints from like neighbours and that saying that it was sort of ruining the the sleep and the view. The view and all this sort of thing. And again, they'd not sort of considered the health and safety of having this massive great big X on the top of the building. So that's been taken down now as well. It's just like a disaster, isn't it? I think it literally it's like he hasn't yeah. thought anything no, through. You it's know? just that I have the money and I can do it, so why yeah. can't I do it? Well, yeah. Wasted time and money and Which is but a then shame. I, I don't I don't know much about Elon Musk, but when I look at him I wonder if he's got like sort of ADHD or that's not a criticism. No, no. I just I, would, I just wonder if he's got that sort I of I would like, say he's neurodivergent, definitely. Hmm, he's definitely a genius. I mean, oh, no, definitely. No doubt about that. Definitely. No doubt about that. Well. Um, but, yeah, some there's something diff- – he's just different. He just – wait, the way he views – I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I views, like him. Yeah. I, I actually – yeah, I actually like I that. Yeah. listening to Elon Musk. I, th- I think he's a, he's, he's a great guy. But I just look at the way he's going about this Twitter thing and I think, God, what? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it literally is like he just bought the thing – Tried to pull out, ended up with it, and he didn't really want it. And now he's just sort of mucking around. Maybe I need to be more patient with with Elon Musk. We'll wait and see. Right, moving on. That's my little xylophone noise. Did you hear that? I did. Moving on. uh, I've been a bit discombobulated today. You have. I have. Um, I was telling you this morning that the last three nights I've had some really deep... uh, Deep dreams, mm-hmm. and they've been. Do you ever get those dreams where you're kind of uh, you wake up and they've they've been so realistic and a little bit disturbing, and it just leaves you the next day not really knowing if you're kind of actually in this world or the dream world yes, still. That's happened to me before. Yeah, do you know what I mean by Definitely. that? Definitely, I can't I can't describe it. Also, um, not the microphone. Sorry, people. Um, yeah, I can't describe what it feels like, but I do know what it feels like because yeah. I've, it's, I've experienced it. Yeah, it is. It's weird. So I'll tell you about my dreams that I've had. So the last few nights uh, I've dreamt about being back at my old job, which was at Gamston Airport in the UK. So I was there for quite a few years. I think it was about 11 years I worked there. Might not have been that long. Nine years maybe. Um I'm back at Gamston Airport working in the in the offices there and I'm moving these desks around. I'm always moving a desk around in my dreams mm-hmm. and trying to organise my office. And for some reason I've like decorated my office in yellow. So everything's yellow. So like the, yeah. the walls are yellow and the desks are yellow and the chairs are yellow and all the filing cabinets are yellow, which is really weird. And then... I go out of my office into the hangar and then, you know that scene in uh, Interstellar where they go on the the water planet? Yes. It's like in my dreams I'm constantly met with like huge oceans of water. 
And they're not oh, really wow. deep. They only come up to sort of, you know, like my, my knees. So I can walk through them. Yeah. But it's just like huge, vast expanses of water that I'm walking through. And in this particular dream uh, last night, I think it was, I walked through this water past this big hangar, which had been destroyed by an aircraft crashing into it. So sometimes I have this dream where these aircraft just fall out of the sky. Uh, oh, we wow. we did have a couple of uh, accidents at Gamston, one particularly horrific one where a helicopter took off and when it was about 70 feet off the ground, um, the pilot wasn't used to that particular hel- helicopter. And I think the controls were, the, were reversed or something. Oh, my goodness. And she... A bit like driving a Volvo. It was back to front. And she, she, yeah, she went into... Uh, like a right-hand turn to move away from the hangars, and it didn't. It went into a left-hand turn, and it smashed into the hangar. And I remember hearing the noise, and my mate John, John Swain. John Swain, if you're out there listening, trying to make contact with John Swain, and I don't know where he is. I've looked for him. I used to like John. Uh, Yeah, but John heard the noise, and he was like, I know what that is. And I remember him jumping, actually, almost jumping a whole flight of stairs down into the hangar. Oh, wow. I don't know how he did it. And then he just he just rushed towards this plane, uh, towards this helicopter. I ran out with him. A few of the other lads did. And it was all, it almost happened in slow motion. This helicopter was, like, stuck on the edge of the hangar. And then it just dropped to the ground. And then, you know, in the movies, when they just explode into a ball of flame, yep. that happened. Wow. And you could see the pilot and the... The, the guy with her in the passenger seat and like, it was just horror on their face in this ball of flame. And my mate, jo- uh, John, I mean, he, he didn't even, he didn't even stop to think. He just ran into the, into the flames. Wow. And he was a big lad, really big stocky lad, you know? Um, and he just put his elbow through the, um, the, like the glass bubble. Yes. Um, was another guy there called Dave Todd. I don't even know if Dave's alive now. He was about my age. This was back 30 years ago. He got down on the ground and he was like uh, untangling their feet from the controls, which were all mangled up. And oh, then John wow. lifted the two guys, uh, the, the girl and the guy, out through the canopy, one on each hand. He was a really strong as an ox. John well, was. and I suppose adrenaline then gives you the strength that you need to do what you've got to do. Yeah. I mean, there was another guy called Kevin who actually ended up getting a, I'm not sure if it was a medal or something. I can't remember. What oh, Kevin, wow. I can't even actually remember what Kevin did. Kevin was a lovely guy, but he did something and he got uh, praised for it. John didn't. Dave didn't. Um, and then Damien, the other guy, Damien, shot off and got the fire truck and came and put it out. And they ended up with like huge burns all over them. Uh, they did. They survived. Wow. Yeah. But that was a bit, that was a bit, um, traumatizing, if I'm honest. And I, at the time, I didn't know first aid. I went right. on to become a first aid trainer. Okay. But at the time, I didn't know first aid. And when I saw it, I just froze, literally did not know what to do. And someone screamed at me, go and, go and call an ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, you know, ambulance and fire brigade sort of thing. But. So I don't know if sort of that's had a traumatic uh, effect on me because that I'm I'm always having these dreams about helicopters and planes and mm-hmm. things dropping out mm-hmm. the sky and blowing up into balls of flames. Have you got anything on? Because uh, we're big believers that dreams have meanings, don't we? We are. Um, so just quickly, walking through water mm-hmm. can represent a search for spirituality. Mm. Or signals that you feel peace and contentment? Both. Yeah, I feel peaceful and contented. Yay. And I'm always looking for the next spiritual spiritual level. Yeah. 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 Does yellow mean anything? Yellow, I'll have to look that up. Yellow was quite unusual because I I haven't had yellow in my dreams before. Uh, Normally I have red a lot. There's I always have this red car in my dreams. Um, And quite often I'm not in control of the car for some reason. That was in my dream. The other the other night, uh, three nights ago, I had a dream that I was at uh, my uh, mum and dad's old house, which my sister and brother in law now live in. Um, and there was all these cars uh, like parked up 
around mm-hmm. the, you know, in the drive and in the back garden and front garden, everything. And I've got like multiple cars. I own all these different cars, a little mini and a, um, a great big Pajero and an old Escort and all these sort of things. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times in my dreams, I drive my cars, I park them up somewhere and then I forget where I've put them. Yeah. And I was having a conversation with my mum saying, I think my dad's gone and sold all my cars. Like he's sold my Mini and he's sold my Escort and he's just gone and sold my Pajero. And I'm not very happy because I didn't get to see any of the money. Uh, my mum keep my mum is constantly showing up in my dreams. So she was at the airport the other night. Um, I went into an office and demanded to be paid because I'd not been paid since January in this dream. That happens a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm constantly going to work for this company and never getting paid, whatever yeah. that means. And then John said to me, oh, me and some of the other lads, we're, we're like jumping ship and we're going to go, uh, we're going to go to a new airport and we want you to come with us. So I was walking with John around this airport and this is where it got a bit horrifying. Um, there was this mound of like mud and as we're walking along, I spotted a hand in the mud sticking out of the mud. Oh, and as wow. I got closer to it, I saw this like face and there were like all these dead bodies in the mud. And I, I tried to make a phone call. Have you ever had that in dreams or you're making a phone call and the phone won't work? Or I, I can't speak. Or you Nothing's can't speak. coming out of yeah, my mouth. that's it. Yeah. yeah. I, I get like, I'm trying to dial 999 and I just can't get a signal. And someone was shouting, oh, put an extra nine in. So and I couldn't get you're through. You're in Australia now. You should be dialing triple zero. Triple zero. That's probably why I couldn't <laughs> get through. And uh, the phones melt in my hands in my dreams. Or the numbers it. sort of. Or the numbers blur. blur. And I just, yeah, I get that too. That's weird. Yeah. Or, the, or the phones like Elongated. elongate or shrink. And it's, it's just weird. In the end, I managed to get through on this dream phone. And uh, the person on the other end was Spanish or something. And I was shouting, we need, we need the police. We found all these dead bodies buried in the mud. We need the police. And I wasn't sure whether they could understand me or not. But my mum was there saying, look at the mud. Look at the mud. Yeah. Pointing it out to you. Pointing out to you. Because you wouldn't have seen the, it otherwise. Look at the mud. And I'm like, what's with the mud? Oh, shit. There's all these dead bodies in the mud. Mm. But she's always in my dreams. And I, I don't know what's going on there. It's weird, isn't it? What have you found? Anything? Um. I did have, did find one, hang on. I'm trying to I used to do have a this dream. massive search of everything. When I was a kid, I used to have a dream of a sign, sidewinder snake going through the desert on the sand. Mm-hmm. And it just used to, just used to loop all night long. That was the dream. And uh, my sister had the same dream. That was strange. Wow. Hmm. I told her about my dream in the morning. She said, oh, I dreamt the same thing last night. Wow. Well, isn't it? She probably can't even remember that now. What have uh, you found? So Anything? Yellow. Yellow. The colour um, yellow in dreams. What does that mean? that happiness and satisfaction oh. will dominate your affairs in the future. That's good. That's a good start. Um, however, desks. Desks. Yeah, what's that all about? I have these dreams where I'm just constantly moving desks yeah, the around. The desk symbol may represent a bad or negative future. Oh. Um, it may pretend the death of a close family member. Ah, uh, yeah. Or a difficult situation in the workplace. Well, do you know what? Really I'm I'm place. actually expecting at some point my dad will die. Because mm. my dad's like 85 now. He, he, he never expected to live past 40, to be honest. He was always saying, oh, I've not got long in this, not got long in this world. Oh, no. Yeah, he's 85, and it's it's sad because, like, obviously because he's a, a Jehovah's Witness and he has no real contact with me, um, I will never really get that kind of closure with my dad. You know, yeah. like when he dies, that's kind of, you know, that's mm-hmm. it, that's it really. Uh, in some ways, in some ways I think it's helpful that I've moved to Australia. Yeah. Because if he died and I was literally only down the road from the Kingdom Hall, that would be Feeling that would be well. I'd home. already I'd already thought if in if I was in the UK I wouldn't go to his funeral. Um, not because I don't love my dad, but just because if I went to the funeral, I'd be in a kingdom hall, which I don't really want to go in a kingdom hall again. 
mm-hmm. or bad memories of Kingdom Halls in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'd be shunned. You'd be at your dad's funeral and people wouldn't talk to you. Yeah. yeah. You know? So I just sort of thought, mm, don't think I'd really go. Unlike here where disfellowshipped ones will actually sit up the front of the Kingdom Hall and expect to be hugged and they will be hugged. Yeah. I'd... I think I think you might get maybe one an elder or two. No, no, this might, is but no, like droves, and you're just no, like, you are you for real? You wouldn't get that. You wouldn't get that in the UK. Yeah, you wouldn't get in the UK. Very strict on that. Uh, no sort of outward displays of well, and they're British, <laughs> so you know the stiff upper lip and all that sort of thing. Anyway, but um, you know, I'd want to sort of be there to support my sister. Yeah, um, but. You know, I think I think the fact that there's now ten thousand odd miles between me and my family, I think in some ways that makes it a little bit easier if and as and when that time comes. Makes it easier to make the decision whether to be there or not. I guess. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's a twenty seven hour flight away yeah. sort of thing, you know. And uh there you go. What else have we found on dreams? Anything? Um is there anything specific about your desks? Desks, Any colors? Uh, it they're just painted? wooden desks just with wooden desks, wooden desks okay. with drawers. And one of these desks I'm moving around was sort of really crappy with loads of paint, peeling paint on it, red and white. And they were inside, outside? Uh, they were inside. And I was dragging them from one office through to another. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dreams. What do you think about dreams? Dreams, dreams, dreams. See, I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute about uh, interdimensional travel because I think dreams are as real as this world. But I think it's, I think what's happening in your dream world, you're tapping into another dimension. We're coming back to the old uh, multiverse of madness again with uh, Doctor Strange. I I think in some cases that is, they are. I'd I'd hate to think that in every instance that those things are actually happening somewhere in the universe. Well, well, okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Right, so when it comes to, uh, have you got anything about desks? By the way, uh, not, not not really, really. nothing about no, that. No, okay. just uh, your f- obstacles will be cleared. Obstacles will be cleared. Mm. Mm. Let's means. talk about interdimensional for a minute, and then we'll come back to this DMT drug thing in a moment. So, I've got this theory, and it's not it's not a particularly unique theory. Other people with greater minds than mine have thought this before. You know, um, physicists and you know theoretical scientists mm-hmm. have come up with this idea that at every point in time every possibility exists for the next moment in time yeah so it's a little bit like if it, you know using illustration if you drive to the end of the road there's ultimate possibilities you can turn left you can turn right you can go straight on you can crash into the car that's coming around the corner you know there's yeah you can decide to turn around and go home, whatever, infinite number of possibilities. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm very aware of the fact that I have a consciousness and I am kind of directing this vehicle, this body, Mm -hmm. through this dimension. And I make choices. You know, I, I, I go to the end of the road, I turn right, I turn left, whatever. But all the other possibilities were there. I could have taken any of those possibilities, couldn't I? Yeah. I think my consciousness takes, or the consciousness I'm experiencing takes a particular route, and that's like collapses the waveform. That's the sort of terminology that's used when it comes to quantum mechanics, isn't it, where the the indeterminate principle where any possibility exists, but then you choose one or you observe one, let's say, yeah. And the waveform collapses and that becomes your reality. Yeah. I think that's what's happening with my consciousness. As okay. I'm going through my life, I'm sort of circumnavigating these or navigating these kind of uh, infinite possibilities and I'm choosing. I'm choosing. Yeah. 
and that becomes my reality. But I think the other options also exist. I think there's probably like infinite versions of my consciousness that branch out into those other possible branch, uh, possible routes, possible paths through time and space. Yeah. And they're just as real. I don't experience it because my, my instance of consciousness is constantly being updated with the, with the particular yep. branch that I've taken. Mm. But I reckon there's a version of me in all those other possibilities that's just as real and feels just as conscious as I do in this one. So if if that was the case, I think it's completely possible that there's a universe where my mum, for example, still exists. Yeah, yeah. You know, my mum died in 2015, I think it was, in this conscious experience. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean that Doesn't necessarily in mean in all the other yeah. dimensions that she, she st or, or possibilities that she still exists, um, that she doesn't exist. So, but... In all those other uh, dimensions where she does exist, they've all branched off from the experience I had of my mum at some point, aren't they? Mm -hmm. She's Makes sense. Yeah? Yeah. So if you have a connection with somebody, a strong connection with somebody, your mum, your dad, your, your wife, your children, whatever, it strikes me that... Even if they die in this universe, the instance that exists in another parallel dimension probably still has that strong connection to you. That makes sense. It does yeah. make sense. Yeah. And like you say, there probably there probably are dimensions where there are weird things going on. You know? Yeah, I know, but I would hate to think that <laughs> Well, some some of every, the dreams, some every, of the dreams you have. But according like, to well, quantum mechanics or quantum physics, everything is possible, isn't it? That's true. Yeah. All all potentialities. All potentialities are possible. You know. Yeah. So I I just wonder whether like you know people put a lot of uh, thought into like time travel, don't they? All oh, let's build a time machine where mm -hmm. we can go forward and backward in time. I think where we should be concentrating our efforts is interdimensional travel. Yeah. Jumping between these quantum branches, our reality and alternative realities. That's where I think, and I think the answer, if, if you were looking for the answers, it would be within dreams, either dreams or psychedelic experiences. Okay. That's where I think the travel, the idea of travel would come in. Travel through your dreams. Mm. It's not, it's not as crazy as it sounds. I mean, you know, even the militaries looked into, Ideas like this, you know, back in the sixties, oh, they were yeah. doing um, astral projection uh, experiments to see if they could astral project their soldiers into kind of the enemy's territory and and spy basically astral wow. project, projection sp spies. Because I think you know, like when you when you dream, don't you feel that's like a little bit like astral projection when you dream. Well, you're in a different place, a different time. Um, again, is it, you know, when you when you think or you experience deja vu because you dreamt something, was that, were you travelling into the future? Were you travelling into a different time? You know, it's... I don't think it's, so it's, it's, I don't think it's future because I don't actually think there is such a thing as future or present uh, or past rather. Yeah. Future or past. I think there is only now. I think consciousness only exists in the now. I don't. I don't think there is the future and past don't exist. They're, they're both okay, possibilities. Okay. So how, do you, how would you explain déjà vu then? Um, I would explain déjà vu that it's a connection with an alternative universe, and then it happens on this in your one. now. In, okay. Yeah. Okay. But all I right, do. So by, by that extension, then all right. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Now, go on. Deja Sorry. vu. Well, I, I, right. So deja vu. I suppose it could be time based. I mean, in my in my book, I am God. Um, it talks about if if you were to walk uh, in a straight line through a field of barley, for example, mm -hmm. it would be like a, a beautiful crop of barley that's not been disturbed, and you walk through it. 
and then you walk around the earth in a straight line. This mm -hmm. is just a thought experiment. You come back round again mm -hmm. and you'd be walking through the same field of barley, but it would be different this time because you've been through it. So now when you walk through it, you're seeing the effects of the effect you had on it when you walked through it the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it would still feel like you'd been there before. That's the feeling I get with deja vu. It's like sometimes I feel like I've been here before. I've done this before. Yeah. There's something very familiar about, about this it. This place, this time. This yeah. But um, it's not exactly the same. Now, it's funny because in my experience, is it's, it exactly been, the same? it's been exactly the same. And it actually feels like, you know, in, the, in a movie where someone has either got a memory coming to them, you know, mm -hmm. to their minds or something, and everything sort of just moves around them and blurs mm -hmm. and sort of sucks them into this epiphany. That's what it feels like for me. Deja vu. Yeah, and it's sort of like everything mm. around you is just like, hang on a second, just this light bulb. You know moment. that. You know that sort of again discombobulated feeling. Yeah, where you just don't quite feel like you're in the right space or time. Yep, that's how I've been feeling the last few days. Yeah, and, and I've dreams put, will do that. To I've you. put that down to dreams, yeah. but I do wonder if there's something deeper going on there on a psychological level, or even a quantum level. It's possible. You know, don't know. It's Could possible. Be. I've been reading about uh, quantum computing this week as well. Uh, as you know, with computers going right back to valve computers, you know, the early valve computers, uh, and this is, tr this is translated through to silicon based computers. Um, they're binary based, aren't they? Yep. So they work Zeros on. And ones. Yeah, either a switch is on or it's off, but it's, it's not both. It's either on or off. That's it. And you can put a uh, question to a computer, a formula, you can ask it to solve an equation or something like that. And the way it will work is it will do it will do the ons and offs, the ones and the zeros. Yeah. Uh, and it will come up with a an answer as to whether or not the equation works in that particular way. And it will say, no, it doesn't. And then it will try another option. Yeah. And it will come back. No, that doesn't work. Then it will try another one. You know, and each time it's kind of trying different permutations of a an equation that you're trying to solve, and eventually it will come back and go, oh, I found the answer to that. This works. Yep. You know, all the zeros, all the ones are all in the right place, and we get a, a, a consistent answer to the equation. Um, Google has got a computer now which is quantum-based, so it's based on uh, what they call qubits, Q, I think it's Q, U, B-I-T-S, something mm -hmm. like that, qubits. Um, it's so, so instead of silicon-based computing, we're, we're talking now it's, it's got so small that you're actually using particles as switches. So you're, you're talking about um, photons being used as wow. switches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and other, you know, uh, quantum particles being used to determine whether something's a one or a zero. But the, uh, and in order to do this, they have to basically contain these very small particles in extremely low temperatures. Otherwise they just fly off and, you know, cause they're very um, energetic, these particles. So they have to okay. slow in a sense, they're slowing the system down in order to be able to manage it. If right, that, uh, okay. this is how I understand it. Um, but here's a weird thing, you know, with quantum physics, you know, the Schrodinger's cat um, example. Yeah, it either is or isn't in there or alive. Well, it's both. Yeah. yeah. It's, so you, you get a box and you put a, a cat in a box and you put a particle that may decay, it may not decay, depending. And if it does, then it breaks a container of cyanide or something and it kills the cat. Mm-hmm. But from a quantum, you know, and you, you'd think, well, the cat is either dead or alive, isn't it? Yeah. It's either dead or alive. But in the quantum physics model, like the cat is in both states. Because you don't know which and state it's, it's only, actually Well, in. it's only when you actually open the box that an observation takes place of the particle and then there's a waveform collapses 
and the cat becomes either dead or, or is still right, alive. Right. But up to that point, from a quantum perspective, both possibilities are true. I know it's like it's weird. It bends your head. But it makes sense because you, you don't have a definitive answer until you actually until see it. Until an observation is made. Mm. And the observation doesn't have to be a human observing it. It could be a camera observing it. That's the part that that's really weird. Yeah, blows that, my mind. Right, and yeah. that, that's sort of the basis to the uh, two double. Almost like even though it's, it's inanimate, it's still the camera's inanimate. It's still an, an observer. An observation or a cal- uh, mm, uh, yeah, mm. has been made. Um, this is where the quantum computing gets really weird because whereas in silicon-based computing you've got a zero or a one, in quantum computing it's a zero, a one, or both, or neither. Wow. And whereas when you put uh, an equation to a, a silicon-based or valve-based computer, it will run a it will run a a possibility and come back with a yes or no. Then it will run another one, yes or no, another one, yes or no. And eventually it will come back and go, I've found the answer. Or the best probable answer. Or the best probable answer. In in these quantum computing models, it does every possibility at once. Wow. So it's immediate. It just it just runs the every possibility and comes back with an answer. This is where it gets really, really spooky. Um the fastest supercomputer on the planet, so this is a silicon-based supercomputer, compared to this new Google quantum computer, the Google computer can do a particular equation that they've thrown it in a few seconds that the supercomputer would take 47 years to solve. No way. I don't know what the equation is, but whatever it is, it's an equation is a calculation that it puts to it and it solves it in a few seconds as opposed to 47 years. Would that be because the formula has already been answered previously? And no. so it's sort of no, like... The, these are unknown, unknown answers that they're giving the computer. Unknown question, yeah, questions that they're asking. The they don't, they, un, unknown answer. uh, answers, yeah. yeah. They put the question to it. And with the supercomputer, it has to work through each step of the each step of the process wow. until it this arrives AI at an answer. Stuff and quantum stuff is you. You go and link that with AI as well. We're starting to get into some really scary, scary. areas, aren't yeah. we? Uh, I mean, scary. you showed me a thing this week with Morgan Freeman. Yes, a video. Where Morgan was... Freeman doing a video and audio, wasn't it? It was a video with audio. Of Morgan Freeman. But it wasn't, but it Morgan, wasn't Freeman. Morgan Freeman. It was an AI. And it actually said, like, even the picture is not Morgan Freeman. It's not even a picture of and him. And you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You would not know. Uh, a couple of other things I've read with the AI this week. There was a um, an Instagram feed or a Twitter feed or something of um, a beautiful model, beautiful girl, um, and she's got something like 3.3 3 million followers. She doesn't exist. Oh, wow. AI generated woman doesn't exist. Um, That's getting really weird. And there was one I was reading about today, actually, where there's an artist, brilliant artist, who's just discovered that one of the AI uh, programs that are out there has done like what they call scraping. It's, It's scraping information from the web. Right. Uh, and it scraped her pictures to use as a basis oh. to create new art. So you can, for example, now go to this AI program and say, create me a book cover in the style in the of style this particular of- artist. And it will create a completely new uh, piece of art using her art as as the algorithm. And she's not happy about oh, it. Oh, I can imagine. Oh, I don't blame her. She says she feels like she's been violated insofar as like the art that she's created. She's got a um, a relationship with that art. Mm. And now that relationship has been violated because it's now been reduced down to. And, and who do you take to task on it? Don't it's know. AI. It's AI. Like, I don't know. There's no personal responsibility. You can even get AI bots now uh, where you can have like your own personal girlfriend or boyfriend to chat to yeah. and have a relationship with. Now... I thought that was Hey Google, but, you know... <laughs> hey Google, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Yeah, everything everything off. in the studio has just started going 
<laughs> going off. Thank you for asking. That's all right, Google. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, but it's, it's getting weird, isn't it? And if you if you start getting into the realms of if you if you can start uh, combining AI with quantum uh, computing, yeah, this is actually going to start getting more intelligent than humans. I mean, computers can already do long. calculations quicker than humans. I mean, that one that takes 47 years for that supercomputer to do, a human couldn't do it. They, they couldn't live long enough to do it. No, that's right. Yeah. But a quantum computer can do it in a few seconds. What are we creating? Something beyond our control. Something I beyond our control. You've let, if, you know, being about Schrodinger's cat, but you let the cat out of the bag <laughs> and... Um, it's worked the, up the, enough. The thing is, as well, I mean, can you imagine a world where maybe we created AI, silicon-based or quantum-based, and then humanity became extinct? Completely possible. And the AIs yeah. are still continuing. That is true. You know, especially yeah. if they're based, you know, if they're solar-powered or whatever, mm. you know, or atomic-powered, and they, they continue to operate. Could those, could those AI bots at some future point be developing a spirituality and starting to think, where did I come from? Who created me? Oh, there seems to be evidence that maybe, you know, and we could become, we could become the gods that created the AIs. Maybe that's what we are. But we'd be dead. So what was the point of that? Yeah, well, maybe the gods that created us are dead. You know, that's a... That's, that's what I mean. A, it's, like, so it's not like we could be worshipped the, or they, you know... No, extraterrestrials maybe that... Maybe that's all we are. Maybe we're just AI bots. Maybe we are AI bots ourselves. Version one, and we're going to be superseded by version two. That's flipping scary, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, when it comes to things like gods and extraterrestrials and all this sort of thing, I wonder whether or not that is actually a bleed through from other dimensions. Because we were talking this week about... Um, one of our friends has, has said that he's been talking to an ex-JW online and there's been quite a few JWs apparently that have been waking up to it not being the truth mm -hmm. and also waking up to their spirituality, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and they've apparently, this I don't know anything about this, but apparently they've been seeing these like orb-like uh, structures in, in the sky that have yep. been moving very fast yep. and some very small uh, day and night day and night yeah. apparently um and we're wondering what that is is it is it anything are they just going mad are they is it just weather balloons or mm. well for fear of sounding like a crazy person oh don't worry that's fine. what this channel is all about <laughs> um i haven't seen the big flashing orbs mm -hmm. but i have seen the um, slow moving star, slow -like moving ones. star, and it's it's they're not they're not flashing, so it's not like it's a it's not airplane a plane or, or something like that, anything like that. So it's a moving star, a moving star, but it's not it's not like a shooting star. Oh, I wonder whether that was the moving star in the Jesus account Ooh. with the men from the east um, that followed it. But yeah, so it just takes this little, you know, sedate movement. Sort of thing, but so how, how often have them. you seen them? When did you last um, see one? So the last time I saw, well, the first time I saw one, I would have been twelve. I was visiting a friend in the country, mm. Victoria. Okay, and um, we were all outside at night on their trampoline with blankets and pillows and just watching the stars, trying to see shooting stars, and. There so was a one shooting star moves very quick, very quickly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you can see it just going straight across the sky. This one in particular, it sort of it started moving quite slowly. It was like, oh, is that the beginning of a shooting star? Like before it gets going, or this is you know mentality of a twelve year old. Um, and it just it was just moving nicely, and it nearly crashed. It looked like it was nearly going to crash into another star. We were like, oh, look at that, look at that. And then it sort of went around the star and then, yeah, okay. sort of avoided it and then continued on its way. That's and we weird. Just, I, was like, I didn't. It have wasn't you seen just any me. recently? And then recently uh, would have been 
probably in the last six weeks ago, we had uh, one of my best friends was visiting and, you know, we said goodbye and I was outside on the driveway and I just happened to look up because the stars mm. was coming, were coming out. And um, I managed to see, I, I think I saw three. Three of three them? Three of them, yeah. You should have called me and let me see it. You should have said, oh, come out and like, oh, come no, out that this. Because I've never I seen anything like that. I didn't think anything of it until this friend of ours sort of mm. pointed out, and then I saw the video of this person that the one that the friend this friend yeah, pointed out. And you go, oh, that's what I've and seen. I thought, that's what I was looking at. Ah, strange, isn't it? So, what's going on there? Is it is it some sort of um, extraterrestrial vehicle or I don't know. some and sort of I spirit? I thought or... it might have been like a satellite or something, or in yeah, my mind, satellites I, I don't never glow thought... like stars, do they? Nah, I don't know. You see, if if you were to if you were to say to me, "Oh, I saw a UFO," I was walking down the road one night, a UFO appeared. You know, mm. I'd believe you. Oh, well, I wouldn't be joking about it. If no, I said no. I saw it, I'd saw it. And if I know. saw something like that, that would completely change my view of things. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. But like I said, I haven't seen those the big, the larger orb ones that flash. Yeah. Um, that flash and disappear. Like you know, they move mm. or they move quite fast. All I saw were the star. Like well, interesting that the, these sightings are being connected with people that have left Jehovah's Witnesses. And are awakening to their spirituality, or maybe it's just a fulfilment of Matthew twenty-four, where there oh, would be no. signs in the heavens. Oh God! <laughs> signs, and in then the, heavens. the end would come. <laughs> then the end would come. We used to say that uh, years ago. We used to translate that scripture as uh, the war planes, wasn't that it? That it was referring to war planes and Sputnik and all those sort of things. Yeah, and I remember the assembly that where they changed it, and they said it's going to be a literal celestial phenomenon phenomena in the future. So one minute in the scriptures, in that same chapter, everything's literal and then it's figurative and then the other part's figurative and the other part's not literal and the other part is. (sighs) Making it up as a go along, a bit like Elon Musk with Twitter. So, uh, right, what have I got? Um, That's kind of me being discombobulated this last week and feeling like I'm literally feeling like I'm not in the right dimension at the moment. Feel really off, really weird, very strange. Um, and Mind you, it- you haven't been very musically creative this week either. No, um, we got the TV this week, and we've been we got spending a, a lot of time watching telly of an evening. Rather yeah, we've than been watching telly, haven't we? So maybe your creative yeah. juices just haven't been flowing as much. Yeah, You've been stifled by could be that TV. So we got a new telly, didn't we? You we treated did. me to a new telly. Woohoo! Woohoo! And uh, we've got ourselves a blau punked. Is that how you pronounce yeah, it? I think so. And it's all right, isn't it? It's pretty good. Pretty good for the money. Was yeah. it about four hundred and fifty dollars or something? Yeah, something like that. That's like two hundred and fifty pounds in yeah. in the UK. Yeah. It's a fifty-five inch ultra four K TV, smart TV, for two hundred and fifty quid. Can you believe it? That's from Office Works. The prices mm. are ridiculous there. Just Great, so, isn't it? Oh, it's unbelievable. But this this new TV, I was watching it, and I couldn't get into it at first. We were watching um, X Men, uh, the mm-hmm. first, the the chronological first one, X Men First Class, yeah. that one. I was watching it, and it looked it looked like a really crappy TV program. Didn't look like a a movie, a movie. Yeah. You know, I was thought, something not right with this. And I did a bit of research, and apparently it's because the uh, films are not shot at the same uh, frame rate as the TV is actually displaying it at natively. So the, the, the films are actually shot at a slower frame rate. Okay. Yeah, something yep. like 24 frames a second or something like that. These ultra 4K TVs, they run at a much higher frame rate than that. So what they do is they inter... Polate interpolation, I think it's called something like that. Um, additional frames. It basically it works out what the frames should be in between. So oh, it, okay. Yep. So, so it kind of like artificially inserts extra frames. And you end up with this like hyper realistic 
image yeah. on the screen but it's so realistic it doesn't look like a film anymore it looks they call it the uh, soap opera effect yeah and you could you tell or not it just didn't look right did it because i've never seen the x-men movies you just thought yet. it was a crappy I, I movie just, no i just thought because it's based you know in the 19 60s it was, 60s um that it was just sort of that ambient look yeah trying to no it just it was where that. it was artificially in, interpolating these. Yeah, and then you change the settings. Yeah, so there's a setting. A it's better. called uh, motion smoothing on a lot of tellies. But on this on this Blaupunkt, it's called MEMC, if anyone's got a Blaupunkt telly and they're experiencing the same problem. MEMC, it's under picture settings, advanced. And you switch it off or lower lower the MEMC setting, I think it's called. And it reverts back to not quite as high definition but it just feels more like a film than yeah. you're actually – because it was too hyper-realistic, wasn't it? It was, it was like, almost was, like you a could see 3D. The pause in it. Yeah, yeah, almost like a 3D effect without it being 3D. Well, you could see the pores in their skin. You could see everything. Yeah. You could see um, – even – I don't know if you noticed when we are watching Death in Paradise, Humphrey's jacket, you could actually see the weave in the jacket. Yes. And on the computer he was using, you could see the uh, fingerprints on the computer screen. You could see everything. Yeah, it was really, yeah. You know, and you'd think that would be really good. You'd think that would be a really good experience. Oh, super high realistic. Yeah. But it just it's took that much. kind of, yeah. um, that creative feel away from it. It didn't look like something you wanted to watch. Apparently, Too much detail. Too apparently much detail. Tom Cruise, um, for all his Scientology nonsense um he, he he's actually said something i think i agree with him he said that the films that he's creating dead reckoning and what have you he wants you to turn smooth motion emotion smoothing off he doesn't oh. like it he thinks it's awful and i i happen to agree i happen to agree i think if you're watching something that's more sort of um graphical like a sci-fi movie or something like that perhaps so you know, some or of the CGI or CGI. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah, I mean. Would be yeah, great. yeah, you, you'd you'd want. But even like we were watching enhanced. the first uh, Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes last night, it just didn't look right, did it? No. So I switched it off, and then it felt like a film a bit again. Better. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, we've got our new TV, smart TV. So maybe that's sort of been affecting. Maybe, yeah, because this last week I've been pretty tired. I've not really been feeling very creative. This I've just been exhausted. Yeah, but we've not been going to bed at a decent time either. It's well, that's been, true as well. Because we've been watching things. Because we've been watching the telly. <laughs> yeah. So it could be a combination of things. <laughs> Let's get rid of the telly. <laughs> Let's send the telly back. I think so. Um I want to talk about uh, dream, uh, not dreams, DMT uh, for a little bit because it ties in with some of these things. But before I do that, I just want to plug my book, if you can see it up here on screen. First Aid for Bipolar Disorder. I, so I wrote, I wrote this book, First Aid for Bipolar Disorder. Um, it's available on... On Amazon in Kindle and also in paperback, and it describes what bipolar disorder is. Mm -hmm. So there's two two main types of bi bipolar disorder. There's type one and type two. Bipolar two two poles, two extremes mm -hmm. is basically what bipolar is. It used to be called manic depression. Mm -hmm. You could either be depressed or manic, but the problem with that is not everyone goes manic. Mm -hmm. Some go what's known as hyper, uh, sorry, hypomanic. It it means just slightly under manic. You're edging towards mania, but not quite. It's not full blown. It's not full blown. So bipolar type one is the the full on deep depression, mm -hmm. followed by a a, a, a real high. yep, amazing manic uh, to the point of psychosis mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and when, when we say depressed and manic, we don't necessarily mean sad or happy. That's not necessarily what we mean. Although depressed often is accompanied with a deep, deep, deep sadness. 
it's it's more about a low energy level. So when you're mm-hmm. when you're in those depressed periods, you're in a, a low energy. When you're in the manic, it's like your energy levels are through the roof. Mm-hmm. Mentally, we're speaking here. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so you get like people that are experienced full blown mania. Their brains are like, you know, there's a, um, there's a book. I shall just bring it up on screen. There is a book called Touched, Touched with Fire by Kay Redfield Jameson. And she links, um, she links these manic periods and hypermanic periods to, um, creativity. Mm hmm. It's amazing. In, in fact, in the back of my book, I've got lists of people that are famous people that have had bipolar disorder. So you've got ones like Sinead O'Connor, Catherine Zeta-Jones, uh, Russell Brand, apparently. These are all like really creative, I- inspirational people, aren't they? Mm. Uh, Carrie Fisher yep. from the Star Wars movies. Amy Winehouse, bless her. Yep. Sh- she had it. Winston Churchill had it. And he, he ran a war. Yeah. He had bipolar disorder. Uh, Vincent van Gogh. No surprise. No surprises there. Uh, Stephen Fry. He's got bipolar. He's got bipolar type two, I believe, which is what I've yeah. got, which is the depressions are very deep. So I get those very low periods where um, I can feel incredibly sad mm. during depression, but it tends to be more of just a, 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 a physical weight. Top, not even know. edgy. It's, um, no. it's not edgy. Fatigue. It's the opposite. Yeah, yeah just yeah. numb. Yeah. Sort of, you know. Um, whereas Stephen Fry gets the hypomanic episodes, where it's like he's got this full-on energy, and it's not. You can't say that he's completely raving nuts when he's got it. He's, he's not like gone the full-on manic, lost touch with all reality. Mm. It's more like the energy pushes your brain to places where your body can't keep up. So you're creating, you're painting, you're writing, you're writing songs, you're writing plays, you're, you're, you're doing all this stuff, uh, and your body just can't keep track with the mm. with where your brain's going. And then, of course, ultimately, you you have a crash. Yeah, you know. So you tend to. This is why bipolar is this. It's you get these ups, followed by a crash, and then you get this low downs, mm. and then you go up, and then you're down again. And it's this is the the book touched with fire. It's like during those up periods, it's like you're, it's it's like you're being touched by something that's outside of your reality. Mm, mm. It's a, a almost a spirituality. This is why I've said that, you know, these days we get medicated for bipolar. Yeah, we say, well, it's not normal. But if you were in a like a, a one of these sort of tribal situations from the past, Aborigines yeah. or Native Americans. Americans. Um, the person with these polar opposites that is sort of goes into these deep spiritual creative periods would be viewed as the, the community sage or something, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Same with bipolar, uh, not bipolar, um, bisexual. Yes. Native Americans viewed them as something very special. Very spiritual and very, very special. special. Yeah. Um, people that were bisexual, people that were, um, transgender. Transgender. Yeah. Two spirit, I think they call them. Two spirit. The two spirit. Which is probably why sort of, you know, the, the ones with the bipolar sort of aspects as well would be viewed as, mm. um, like I said to you earlier, it's like you, you've, you've got two versions of me in one. You've got double the. Got value double for the, money. Yeah. Now the thing is, the thing is it can be disruptive, you know, like bipolar type one, you can go from, you know, not wanting to get out of bed for six months to thinking that you're Jesus and you can fly. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, you're running up the streets naked sort of thing. You know, I'm glad you don't have that. I, I don't have I, type one. No, uh, I have type two. I feel, I feel very sorry for people who experience that. The Ex- really that extreme, those swing. extremes. Well, this is, I, this really is, I wonder whether uh, Van Gogh probably had type one because you don't just cut your ear off for no reason, do you? No, you know, no. So, so yeah, Stephen Fry. Uh, let me t- uh, read a couple more names out. You tell me if this surprises you. Mel Gibson. No. Um, Spike Milligan. I don't know. 
He's oh Spike Milligan, famous British comedian from uh, the uh, the Goon Show with Harry Seacombe and Peter Sellers. Okay. I'll have to show you some Spike Milligan. If you see him, you, you just go, yeah, okay. he's bipolar. Marilyn Monroe. That's a surprise. Is that a surprise? Uh, Frank Sinatra. That's a surprise. Britney Spears. That's not a surprise. Not a surprise. You know when she cut all her hair off? Yeah. I was, I was thinking that's, that's a hypermanic episode. Mm. Something not. Well, is it quite right? Maybe it's not an illness. Maybe it's just a experience in extremes. I don't know. I think she was trying to tell the world what she was she feeling. She had a message. By yeah. making herself yeah. look different. Well, all these prophets in the Bible, you know, like the Ezekiels and the Johns, you know, and they're, all, they're sort of all off on visions and trances and laying on their side for 400-odd days, you know, staring at a brick and all these sort of things. Mm-hmm. If there was any reality to any of those stories, you know, were they mental or were they, was it well, some sort of spiritual portal that was opening up to them? Or John the Baptizer, mm-hmm. you know, he was wearing animal skins and eating locusts, eating locusts, in, the, locusts in the desert, and bugs in the desert. Like how anybody took him seriously, I considering. But this is what I'm saying, the weirdos. The weirdos were the prophets. Prophets, yeah, that's The weirdos it, yeah. were the ones that were, oh, they're yeah. a little bit different, aren't they? Mm. You know, these days, we're not so much prophets, we're creatives. It's, it's yeah. the singers and the actors yeah. and the comedians, particularly comedians. How many comedians, you know, are got this deep, deep sadness in them? Yeah. And yet, yeah, I was watching that. What was that Steve guy, the Aussie? Oh, I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. Stephen something. Stephen something. Doing a show about suicide the other night and how he he tried to kill himself. Yeah. How can you make that funny? Yeah. It's not not funny, but, you know, to to someone with bipolar disorder, it wouldn't surprise me if he's he's not got bipolar disorder. Apparently one in a hundred people have got bipolar disorder. Wow. So it's, it's not a rare condition. You know, uh, Ludwig van Beethoven. That doesn't surprise me. And Ruby Wax, the comedian. No idea who that is. Ruby Wax, yeah. Does, again, doesn't, doesn't particularly surprise me. There's a mild form of bipolar disorder called cyclothymia. Um, oh, we've got, uh, we've got a poster babe, Linda James, come on. Let Hi, me Linda. just, uh, hello, Linda. Um, let me just see if I can uh, bring up this. I've turned the chat on, so if anyone posts anything, it'll just pop up on the screen, I hope. Uh, Apostle Babe Linda James says, Two spirits and shamans, medicine men. Yes. That's what you're talking about, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Who's uh, Willems? V- Willems was bipolar? Willems? W I. L L E M S. Willems. Who was Willems? Apostle babe Linda Jane James. My nan had a cat called Willems. Don't think I don't think that was bipolar. Uh, but yeah, there's cyclothymia, which is a milder form of uh, bipolar, where you don't get quite as depressed and you don't get quite as high. Um. Mm-hmm. And there's also what's known as a rapid cycling, which I've had in the past, which is where you can literally go from deep depressed to uh, super high within hours. Lovelies, Lovelies, L-O-V-I-L-E-S, says Apostle Babe Linda James, still doesn't ring a bell. Can you look that up for me, Mariella? Mm. Who was Willems? Willems. Willems. Hmm. Yeah. So depression, all these sort of mm. things. Now, I'm medicated for my bipolar, and I don't know if that's a good thing. In, in some respects it is because I don't get – the huge swings so much now. I don't get really as low as I used to, mm. 
but I also don't get as high as I used to. And it's when I was higher that I used to produce so much of my creative content. Yes, but you have to remember too that those highs end up causing a crash. They do. So that's keeping the problem. That balance, that's the problem. Yeah. Um, so I think I think medication has a role, plays a ro- really good role. Mm. But then it depends on how medicated you are. You but don't want to. You don't want to. Is that because of the? Is that though? Is that though because the world, the the world and the life that we live now, these highs and lows, aren't conducive to the life we live now. You know, you're expected to get up and go to work, work. and yeah, I suppose, you know, do all yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Whereas, like in the past, if you were a shaman in a tribe, you know, you weren't under those pressures. If you sort of had a week where you were off your head on, you know, a trance or something like that. You've not got a boss ringing up saying, where are you? Are you? That's true. Just, but then if you've got... I wonder if we're medicating the spirituality away, which is what, uh, was it hasty chicken ball shit? What's his name now? <laughs> I can never remember it. Chicken man. Oh, I don't man. even know if it's a man. Chicken, hasty, hasty chicken, chicken ball. ball. Hello, if you're out there. We love your tweets. We do. Yeah, so he he or she they, he or she or they yeah they tweeted it's worth noting or posted on X social mm-hmm. it's worth noting that the time of broad criminalization of psychedelic plants marks the end or marks the end of a very long era of people that believed in magic mm. people who believed in gods and in monsters and in the unending spirit we stopped worshiping but we also stopped searching and evolving. So very um, enlightened. Yes, statement, very enlightened statement. So, what's he talking about, or she talking about? Are they? Um, what are they talking about? Times when, back in the past, we're we're talking about sort of uh, tribal people again, where they used to take uh, psychedelic, psychedelic, probably natural, natural drugs. Yeah. Um, and these are now things that are legislated against. And ever since we've brought in legislation against these things and people are not having these psychedelic or, you mm. know, call them spiritual experiences or whatever, it's yeah. become a more of a secular society. That's correct. More controlled. More controlled. Mm. Um, more dulled spiritually. Yeah. See, I'd, I'd like to just talk for a few minutes about uh, D, DMT. Because uh, we were talking about this on the way home from the shops today, weren't we? Mm-hmm. So D- DMT is a is a drug, which it, it's at its at its base, it's actually it's actually a natural occurring um, natural occurring plant based psychedelic uh, called a a uh, uaska. Ayahuasca, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Aya, oh, ayahuasca. Okay. Ayahuasca is a is a plant based psychedelic. Um, it's a decoction, a concentrated liquid made by prolonged healing or uh, heating or boiling of the Banisteriopsis capi vine. With the leaves of the Psychotria viridis shrub. So they take these two plants that I've just butchered the names of mm-hmm. and they heat and boil them down into this concoction. This concoction, yeah. And the active chemical in uh, ayahuasca is DMT, d- uh, dimethyl tri- tryptamine. Terephthalate? DMT. So DMT is illegal, for example, in the UK, Australia, America, quite a few countries. DMT mm-hmm. is illegal because it's illegal, even though uh, ayahuasca is a naturally occurring plant-based mm-hmm. uh, psychedelic. You can't have that either because it contains DMT. Well, it's like marijuana. Like Here marijuana. in Australia, you can't, yeah. you're not supposed to own a marijuana plant. But the but the interesting thing is these uh, these plants have been used by native uh, people f- 
for years in their uh, in their religious experiences. So I just I found a bit of information on this. So DMT, uh, hallucinogenic uh, drug that occurs occurs in plant species. It can be made in a lab, synthesized into like a white crystal, uh, which you can either inhale or inject. Um, it's known as the spiritual molecule. It's another name for it, DMT. That's interesting. Isn't it? Uh, it's also known as the 45-minute psychosis, which brings me back to this idea like bipolar. When you're having a psychotic episode. It could last. Well, is it? Well, it could last six months. Mm. You know, you could terrible periods some people have. But it's like we we say it's an illness, but is it? Is it? Are these psychotic episodes that people have? Or is it something spiritual that's happening here? Depends on, I think it depends on how it affects other people, to be honest. Well, I mean, that's often the, the case, isn't yeah, it? You know, I mean, if, if they're if it, going off thinking that they're Jesus, Jesus and, they fly, and stuff like that. Yeah, fly, well, or, that's probably or not. thinking that they can heal people. Or, well, what's wrong with thinking you can heal people? You know, maybe you can. When you're in that state, maybe I don't know. I just I think it's. Know. I just but think it's now. Uh, I mean, I, I've I've got to say just at the outset here, talking about DMT, that I'm not recommending DMT. No, that's um, when you read given. through the yeah. side effects and the flipping risks and all sorts of things, yeah, it, it can be life threatening. Yeah, you could take DMT and worth. end up killing yourself. Yeah. Plus, it's illegal, so yeah. I'm not recommending DMT. But I just find it really interesting that there are these kind of um, tribal people, even even today, in their religious ceremonies that are boiling these plants down, uh, they make it into like a tea, which I, if, if I was to ever take it, I would take it as in a tea light. I wouldn't want to be injecting or... I could imagine you taking a sip of it going, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, well, I tried <laughs> a Twinnings the other it. day. Twinnings. Twinnings. Twinnings Lady Grey. A Twinnings Lady Grey. Oh, it's a horrible thing. So you, uh, you DMT, when you it. take it, you get uh, float, floating feelings, hallucina uh, hallucinations. No surprise there, but this was interesting. You can get an altered sense of time and depersonalization. So that's interesting, isn't it? Depersonalization. You don't actually well, you feel lose, that you're you anymore. I, yeah, you're right, who you are. Did you, you were uh, mentioning over dinner this evening this is the sort of thing we talk about you you said uh about uh anesthetic whether or not that's yeah i did you manage to find anything on that we uh, is if there's anyone listening that knows anything about anesthetic is there anything in anesthetic that is similar to dmt because yeah. when you're on anesthetic you do actually sometimes get an out of body experience that's right that's yeah that was the um line of thought that we were discussing at dinner um you know when you well, not that you have or I have, but uh, where people say that they they see either heaven or other During creatures an or other people under anaesthetic. And so it just got me thinking, well, I wonder if there's any correlation chemically between um, yeah, DMT I mean and <sighs> anaesthetic. And if if there is, maybe it's a specific um way of a person individually metabolizes or even that. if it, even if it's not the same uh drug the same effects seem to be experienced for some people under anesthetic like i mean and what it is that makes those makes some people experience it and not others yes like my my ex my ex wife mm -hmm. which is why Twitter reading that being named to X is so triggering. Mm. <laughs> you don't want a you don't want a social network called X. Goodness me, it either sounds like a porn site or reminds you of your ex <laughs> partner, doesn't it? Um, but my my ex, uh, when she had our, I think it was our first child, she was given some really strong an anaesthetic when she was giving birth, and she swears that she left her body. And she was on the ceiling looking down at her body in labour. Wow. I have no reason to no reason to doubt that at all, you know. 
But yeah, it can wow. be it can be quite dangerous, especially if uh, you've already got a pre-existing mental health condition like bipolar. If you start fiddling around with DMT and you've already got yeah. a, a, already got an, a, a condition that sort of opens up those portals anyway. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I've got this here: the Imperial College of London. Um, some while ago, they I think this was who it was. They put out a. Uh, a request for volunteers to come and take DMT in a laboratory environment. And I actually registered for it because I thought if I was ever going to do DMT, I would want to do it safely, legally, legally, and it would need to be in an environment where if it went wrong, because you can have a really bad trip with DMT apparently. Okay. Um, there was somebody there. Yeah. You weren't yeah. just on your own in a bed sit somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I actually applied for that. I said, yeah, you know, but I, I did tell them that I had bipolar disorder and uh, I wasn't selected. Yeah. But that makes sense now. It makes sense. They would have. So that they actually ended up testing 20 healthy volunteers with DM, DMT. Um, they found it had uh, increased connectivity across the brain. Wow. So more areas of the brain were connected with other areas yeah. of the brain. Um, imagination was triggered. The areas of the brain that work with imagination. So you're now talking dreams. This mm -hmm. kind of, those sort mm -hmm. of areas was triggered. Um, and they actually did track the brain activity. Uh, the doctor that was, was running it at Imperial College London said this work is exciting as it provides the most advanced human neuroimaging view of the psychedelic state to date. Um, so I thought that was I thought that was quite interesting that it was the imagination area that was that was particularly particularly triggered. I wonder oh, what do this you is wonder? going to be this is gonna sound horrible and this is my um experimental Mm -hmm. brain talking here, um, if they were to put that a small amount of it in vaccinations, yeah, how that would affect populations? Probably all be walking around having trips. Because one of but the... I mean, um, like from, from a spiritual perspective... Well, maybe we'd all, would maybe shift, people would all start being spiritual again. If that would shift the, oh, don't doubt it. I, th I think because I think, you only need one. A, well, one the, the thing with the DMT as yeah. well is is it's it, it. Some people are predisposed to becoming addicted to it, so there is a danger there. But for most people, they're not. It's not an addictive drug. So they'll take the DMT. They'll have the trip. They'll see what they see, and then that's it. Mm. It just stays with them for the rest of their life. And the things that they're seeing, um, I've got a picture I'm just bringing up on screen here. It there seems to be a theme where they see these like little grey men, um, and some yeah. sometimes they get scared. The people having the trip feel mm -hmm. really scared, and it's it's really uh, discombobulating again. Um, but more often than not, they say there's an overwhelming feeling of love, and that these grey men are wanting to reach out and connect with us. And this is where I'm sort of saying, you know, are we, are we accessing the same sort of thing again through dreams, through DMT, through bipolar experiences where you have these like super spiritual experiences mm -hmm. where people can have hallucinations and mm. is it, is it something, is, is it just the brain doing a weird thing or is there actually something out there in a, an extra dimension that you're actually opening some portal up? to it I, I do believe there's more to dreams than what we allow ourselves dreams to think. and well you see some people have experimented with psychedelics i mean my friend chris is is has a lot yes. to say about psychedelics yeah. very interesting on the subject i never have and it's not something i would personally recommend but then i've also gone down the route that dreams are a way for me to uh mm -hmm. experience my spirituality and explore my spirituality 
but it's a little bit difficult because you've got to know what the dream means. Yes, and you've got to remember what the dream you've is. Remembering the dream is. Look up I'm actually very good with that now. You're as very soon good as at I that. wake up, I'm I, I remember what I've dreamt. I'm hopeless. But a lot of people dream and then just forget it. Yeah. Apostle Babe, uh, Linda James says, remember that. Uh, a JW family in Canada. She remembers a JW family in Canada that drank some tea um, and thought, let me just pull this up a minute. Remember that JW family in Canada that drank some tea and thought Armageddon was here and then kidnapped their neighbours and were arrested while nude. What? Was that a real thing or was that? Wow. Was that not... Did uh, the Lego guy, the guy that does the Lego parodies, did he not do a, a Lego sketch about that happening? I think he did. And Kevin McFree. Kevin McFree. Yeah. Did he? I don't know. I think so. I, I seem vaguely seem to remember a little Lego sketch where they where they did that. Oh, don't know. No, that's the first I'll go and look I've that up it. afterwards. But yeah, no, I've, I, uh, Apostle Babe, uh, I do not know who this JW family in Canada was that drank some tea. It was some funny tea by the sound of it. That wasn't Twinnings. It wasn't My Lady Grey. Twinings. Is it Twinnings or Twinings? Twinings, one N. Yeah, so it's uh, it's apparently DMT has been used for centuries in religious ceremonies in several South American cult, uh, cultures, um, and it is still out there in a synthetic form. But like I say, for most places, it's uh, you're looking at something that is uh, illegal now. Doesn't last very long, apparently. About uh, forty five minutes to an hour. That's what I mean. I mean, if you if you dosed up. Small dosage in every vaccination that was given would that result in a more open-minded population well, I think on it would. the earth? I think it, I think it probably uh, would. A more spiritually minded population on the earth. I think so. Uh, a more loving population. So is that what we're suggesting? Is that well, what we're we suggesting? Well, we could always give it a go. I mean, is that what we're saying? <laughs> we're, we're reckoning. We're reckoning that we should just a small dose. Doesn't have to what be a they full do trip. Is, uh, but <laughs> Just a small dose. Well, they it should might do. help. It might help with the state of the world. Who knows? <laughs> right. So I have no idea uh, what I'm talking about. That's uh, basically us coming to an end. Not a literal end. <laughs> Just an not. end of a show. So, what do you think? Dreams. Uh, a dreams a portal to the other side. I think in some instances, yes. Yeah, I think there might be. DMT, uh, even though it's illegal. We should all be given a chance to try it. Once. We should all be given a chance to try it in tea form. In tea form. DMT tea bags <laughs> and uh, interdimensional travel. <laughs> Daniel and Maria are the <laughs> tea bags. Tea bags. We'll start releasing a, a range of DMT tea bags. Interdimensional travel, is it true? Uh, I think there's a possibility again. Yeah, with I the think dreams. so. Right, that's us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, call us again soon. Bye. Bye.